yes good morning students uh, is it uh, possible any one of you where uh, we have stopped in the last class what we were discussing is it possible to say quickly yes any one of you is it i am asking is it possible to say quickly what we were discussing I hope you remembered this. Yes, whoever is there, is it possible to say I remembered? Have I discussed about this? I'm asking. So can't say yes or no. Hello. Yes, am I connected? Hello. Yes, my dear students, is it possible to respond? Am I connected? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. I think uh, with that, so let me just uh, go ahead. Uh, yes, in the previous class, I discussed about uh, OFDMA. Okay, that is orthogonal frequency division multiple axis. Okay, both uh, the downlink and as well as uplink transmitter and receivers. Okay, just to have a re uh, revision of that, just let me say in few words. See the each user information first it will be passed through the AMC block. Okay, so hope you all know what is that AMC is. That is adaptive modulation and uh, coding. Okay, so here I have. K number of users, okay. So each user bits will be first passed through AMC block. So what the AMC is having, the AMC block will have forward error correction uh, followed by the QA modulator, okay. So you all know what uh, is AMC is and what is its purpose also, right? So then output of that AMC, right, from each user information bits is of high bit rate that will be uh, given to the serial loop serial to parallel converter to lower the bit rate okay to lower the bit rate we are doing this operation serial to parallel conversion then there will be sub carrier mapping okay after mapping to the available sub carriers then we do the operation of L point IL50 that is uh, inverse phosphorylated transform means it will be converting this uh, frequency domain signal into a time domain signal right if I do IL50 then we do parallel to serial converter after that we are adding the cyclic prefix then it will be transmitted over the air so this is how the OFMA downlink transmitter works that is from base station to user equipment it is okay downlink transmitter means okay so this diagram is about uh, downlink receiver okay this is about OFDMA downlink receiver for one particular user okay it can be extended for multiple users also in the same way right so first step what we need to do because it's the transmitter side we add cyclic prefix and transmit, right? So first thing is we need to remove the cyclic prefix. So that is why the first block is remove cyclic prefix. Then uh, what is the next block in the transmitter that is parallel to serial, right? So we need to do the reverse operation. That is why next we do the serial to parallel conversion. Then IFT block is there. So we have to do reverse operation. That is we take L point FFT, okay? Then subcarrier mapping is there in the transmitter side. So we do the D mapping, subcarrier D mapping at the receiver side. Then after D mapping, we use the frequency domain equalization network. Okay, so we know what is the purpose of FEQ, right? This is used to uh, minimize the uh, phase and as well as amplitude distortions. Then we do the parallel to serial conversion 
then it detect the symbols of each user you will be able to get the user bits at the output side right so this is in a nutshell to say in brief how the downlink receiver works for user one similarly it can be for k users okay so even i think that is also shown here uh, that is with respect to one uh, user receiver and this is about the one user transmitter what you can say right so user one first block is amc already said then serial to parallel sub carrier mapper then l point iff in that we are using m uh, points then rest of the things will be made zero do parallel to serial converter add cyclic prefix and then transmit okay means <coughs> user 1 will be allocated sub carriers of what 1 to m and but uh, the total number of uh, sub carriers available is l okay so whatever the sub carriers we are allocating to the user 1 the remaining sub carriers that is l minus m will be made zero that is why it is shown l minus m as zeros i think yeah so this is about the uplink receiver we have a uplink receiver right with respect to the diagram one what i am saying there it is transmitter i discussed it now with respect to that i can say this is the uplink receiver there is a downlink receiver to the right so remove cyclic prefix to serial to parallel we in the receiver right so we are doing the fft operation first then demapping then i said for each user what we do we do the uh, frequency domain equalizer then do the parallels to serial converter detection we'll be able to get the corresponding user bits okay so this is all about uh, ofdma and uh, i think i discussed about this how the ofdma base station will be allocating uh, each user a fraction of the sub carriers right fine so ofdma as i said it is uh, preferred means in case of lte it is uh, used in downlink okay and scfdma is used in uplink okay so let us see how scfdma works so what we need to understand here is how this scfdma is different from ofdma okay is it uh, possible i will give one minute time just observe and try to find out what is the block added in SCFDMA when compared to OFDMA is there any block added or removed with respect to the transmitter and just uh, have a look I will show the OFDMA uplink transmitter also and you see and compare and you should be able to identify and say this is what the difference is hope you're able to understand what i'm saying hello yes sir yeah i said take one or two minutes time okay try to understand what this block is i think most of the things looks similar okay try to identify which block has been added or removed when compared to OFDMA uplink transmitter, okay? OFDMA uplink transmitter. So without going to that slide, is it possible to say, any one of you, if you have observed or if you have noted the previous slides, or you want me to show that slide also, no? Yes, shall I go back and show that slide? OFDMA uplink transmitter for user one. Yes, sir. Yeah, I hope you noted this at least. SCFDMA. Yes, sir. Yeah. So let me go back and show that. Yeah, OFDMA uplink transmitter, right? Here I was showing about SCFDMA uplink. Uh, sorry. SCFDMA uplink transmitter. Similarly, let me show OFDMA uplink transmitter. Yeah. 
yes able to see this is what OFDMA uplink transmitter for user one okay so at least now looking at that diagram and this diagram is it possible to say what uh, block is added or removed in case of SCFDMA Yes, I want a response. So, an FDMA and FFT blocks added, and um... okay, as uh, Sonali has rightly pointed out, that uh, in case of uh, SC FDMA, the M point FFT block has been added, right? Means what I mean to say here is. When compared to OFDMA, okay, the complexity of the SCFDMA, no doubt it will be more because there will be additional block, which is what M point FFT. Okay, so only this block is added. We just have a look about OFDMA uplink transmitter. So without this block, rest of the things are all same. Okay, for user one bits, AMC block will be there, serial to parallel converter. After serial to parallel converter, there was a sub carrier mapping, then L point IOFFT, parallel to serial, add CPS. Right? So only this M point FFT has been added in case of SCFDMA transmitter for user one. Okay. So what I can say is how SCFDMA is different from OFDMA is in case of SCFDMA, both FFT and IFFT operations are performed. Okay, to nullify the requirement of the extension of the linearity of the power amplifier. Okay, because I said that uh, in case of OFDMA, the main drawback is what? Uh, the peak to average ratio, right? PAR will be more. So that has been eliminated in case of SCFDMA by doing both FFT and IFFT operation in the transmitter. Hope, hope I hope uh, you got that point. Yes, first we do FFT and then we do F IFFT. So with that, we will be canceling the requirement of the high linearity power amplifier. Okay, so that is why this has been uh, used in the mobile unit. Okay, because it won't require the high cost power amplifier. Okay, but of course the complexity is increases when compared to OFDMA transmitter, but the requirement of PAR is reduced because of IFFT and IFF, FFFT, IFFT, FFT and IFFT operations which are carried in the transmitter. So it will nullify the requirement of the high linear range power amplifiers, right? So hope uh, if you are able to catch that point, I think that will be more than enough. I think rest of the things I think you will be able to write on your own. I don't think I need to spend much time on that. Uh, uh, similarly, let me show the SCFDMA uplink receiver. Okay, uplink receiver. So previous diagram I have shown about uplink transmitter for user one. So here I am showing uplink receiver. Okay, for multiple users so do you think anything is different here nothing right only since i said multiple users right so more than one user is accommodated here so k number of users will be there see the first block is remove cyclic prefix then do the serial to parallel converter i do l point fft of course maybe in the previous slide it is written m point fft here what is l l is equal to mk okay and then demapping, so uh, FEQ, right? That is uh, frequency domain equalizers we are using. Since uh, K number of users are there, so we are using K FEQs, frequency domain equalizers. Then do the M point IFFT operation for each. Do parallel to serial, then do the detection to get back to the corresponding bits to the corresponding users. 
okay so whether it is for one user or multiple users you should be able to understand in what way it is different okay if it is for multiple users you have to use k users means k uh, frequency equalizers you have to use frequency domain equalizers then we have to use m point iff's of k numbers similar to the parallel serial converters right so the only difference between this uh, vfdma and scfdma is we are using fft and iffft operation okay both at the transmitter side and as well as at the receiver side so to nullify as i said the effect of or the requirement of high linear power amplifiers okay fine so i think uh, i don't know whether i have discussed it about this vfdma advantages and the disadvantages if not let me say what are the advantages of vfdma uh, and disadvantages So okay, just let me say what are the advantages and disadvantages of VFDMA. Okay, so the advantages of VFDMA, what I can say starts with the advantages of single user VFDM, right? In terms of what robust multipass suppression, that is a mitigation of uh, inter-symbol interference. What I can say, then relatively low complexity when compared to SCFDMA because we do only IFFT. and ffft operation ffft at the transmitter and ffft at the receiver with respect to that we say it is a low complexity right and the creation of the frequency diversity right so what i want to stress upon here is to say what advantage of vfdma is vfdma is a flexible multi path access technique okay vfdma is a flexible even multi path or multiple access technique what i can right so it can accommodate many users with widely varying applications uh, data rates and as well as the quality of service requirements so this is what the big advantage of vfdma okay so it is one of the flexible multiple access technique and it can accommodate many users okay and even those many users with uh, what widely varying applications widely varying applications means with the different data rates okay so depending upon the application even the data rate requirement also varies right so with respect to that and with the different quality of service requirements okay hope this point is clear i said ofdma is one of the uh, flexible multiple access technique that can be used to accommodate many users right with the widely varying applications data rates and quality of service requirements fine right. so here yeah, the multiple access is performed in the digital domain okay in case of vfdma that is before the iffft operation because of that so there is a, a flexibility and the dynamic and efficient bandwidth allocation is possible okay since it is done in digital domain so it is possible to have a dynamic so your allocation of sub carriers is not static okay so it will be dynamic then there will be flexibility in the allocation of sub carriers to different users and it is possible to use the bandwidth as efficiently as possible fine okay so with that what i want to say is because of these advantages right so this ofdma Uh, allows sophisticated time and frequency domain scheduling algorithms 
Sure. So that can be integrated in order to best serve the user population. So this is what the advantages. Then to add on to that, means to just uh, I said no, it can accommodate a variety of applications with the different data rates and quality of service. So for that, one example I've taken uh, voice. So which uh, usually it requires low data rates. Okay, voice, right? Lower data rates is an example of voice because we all know it is maximum 64 kbps only it requires and bursty data also right so which are handled much more efficiently in case of OFDMA than in the single user OFDMA okay that single user OFDMA is known as the OFDMA TDMA or with the CSMA what we can say right Right. So for that only the example is told already with the with respect to voice. I said if OFDMA was not used for voice, so each downlink user could receive a very high rate signal for a very short period of time. Right. So especially in the channels with large bandwidth, like uh, means we all know in LTE, uh, it supports variable bandwidth, right? That is from 1.4 megahertz to 20 megahertz. So when the bandwidth is of uh, 10 or 20 megahertz then it becomes uh, uh, dormant for relatively long time because uh, the voice requires very small bandwidth right so most of the other bandwidth will not be used what i can say so this requires the receivers to quickly process large amount of data and will have a bad latency and as well as jitter properties like uh, voice decompressor okay so that will be what would frequently have to wait for the while before uh, new decoded bits were available. Okay, so that is one drawback only it is. Okay, means if uh, I use if I use a low data rate uh, application for this web domain. Okay, fine. Then uh, switching between users would have to be very rapid. Okay, so the more frequency overhead signaling would be required. So that will be reducing the overall system throughput so that is another disadvantage what i can say okay so add on to that what i can see in the uplink okay in the uplink this ofdm tdma okay would be even more toxic what i can say because uh, in addition to those whatever i have discussed in the previous slide because the sub carrier would have to transmit the wideband signal at very high total power for a very short time, right? And then again, it becomes dormant. So this would put a large strain on the power amplifier. So that is why uh, OFDMA is not preferred for uplink. Okay, it is only for downlink. It is preferred in LTE, right? So this OFDMA does not suffer from these problems because all these things. You now, whatever I said with respect to OFDM TDMA. Okay, OFDM, TDMA. So, so OFDMA will not suffer from whatever the concern I have shown here, right? So, because why it will not be suffering from all these drawbacks? Because the allocation of this time frequency resources to users will be more flexible and can be adopted dynamically to meet the arbitrary, arbitrary throughput, delay, and as well as other quality of service constraints. Okay, if I use the OFDM TDMA, then these are the things. Okay, what happens? Uh, means the subcarriers would have transmitted wideband signal at very high total power, right? In a very short time. So there is a drawback in case of OFDM TDMA, but this will not be existing in case of OFDMA. Okay, so what happens with respect to this? This will put the large strain on the power amplifier. But in OFDMA, since there is a flexibility in the allocation of uh, time frequency resource to users, uh, right, dynamically uh, to meet the arbitrary throughput delay and other quality of service requirements. So that will be an advantage of OFDMA. Okay. So try to understand carefully three things I said how OFDMA is flexible, right? How it can accommodate many users with uh, 
widely varying applications and data rates and quality of service requirements right so what made this multiple access technique is flexible right because it is performed in the digital domain i said right because of that there will be a flexibility uh, and a dynamic allocation of the sub carriers and as well as i said there will be efficient bandwidth allocation right fine so the i hope i don't know to to what extent people are able to understand the advantages in the meantime what are the drawbacks of that there will be some advantages and there will be some disadvantages right so advantage is what i can say in a nutshell to summarize it is a flexible multiple access technique so it can accommodate many users with widely varying applications and data rates and quality of service requirements right drawback is what the drawback is uh what is the drawback any one of you can say yes yes my dear students i am asking you people it shows you are not attentive i don't know what you people are doing So simply, I keep telling from my side. If I hear something, then I can understand you are with me. Otherwise, what I need to understand? So you want me to just keep uh, talking from one end? You don't want to respond? Yes, hello. I am talking with. I am talking to you people only. Yes, speak now. Nobody is saying yes or no. What is this? hello yes any one of you are there with me are all just logged in and doing something else hello yes sir yes respond yes able to understand what advantages i told about ofdma aman sharma yes sir okay Only one student is responding. What about others? Out of uh, I think twenty-eight. Uh, hmm. Yes. What about others? I would like to hear yes from other students also. And in the meantime, people can yes, say sir. what is the advantage. Is it possible to say what is the advantage? At least one point. I might have told many things. At least one point. Is it possible to say? Yes. See no response for this again. Yes, Aman Sharma. At least, can you say, man, what is the advantage of OFDMA? So you are saying yes. Sir, it's a flexible multi-path access technique. Ah. Huh. That can accommodate many users. Okay. Ah. Huh. That's all. That can accommodate many users with widely varying applications, data rates, and as well as quality of service requirements. I said. Okay. So just let me say what are the advantages of uh, this SCFDMA, and as well as the disadvantages, right? And maybe uh, looking at the block diagram of OFDMA and SCFDMA, you might have understood in what way is EFDMA. is different from ofdma right okay so in case of uh, scfdma what i wanted to say is it is retaining the key advantage of ofdma okay what is that key advantage uh, flexibility then to accommodate uh, many users with uh, uh, what widely varying applications with uh, different data rates and quality of service requirements and uh, what is means only part of the frequency spectrum is used by one user at a time so that is the thing in case of scfdma right because i said it is used in the uplink okay so ofdma is preferred for downlink i said so downlink means it can uh, communicate with multiple users okay so this scfdma it means each user will be communicating with the base station right so only part of the frequency spectrum is used by 
any one user at a time that is uh, the thing and another thing is means because of this uh, it allows the band user to be chosen adaptively for higher throughput and allows for much lower total transmit power than if the entire spectrum has to be used okay so that is what is happening in scfd or in ofdm tdm so another the significant uh, advantage of ofdma is the reduced peak to average ratio okay par the par of scfdma is significantly lower than ofdma actually this is the um, this statement is only uh, is the correct uh, justification for the scfdma okay the peak to average ratio of scfdma is significantly lower than ofdma so with that it will be reducing because of this uh, low par so it is going to reduce the power amplifier cost when the power amplifier cost reduces the cost of the mobile unit is also going to be reduced okay so that is what is told here so the transmitted scfdma signal for each user is what uh, is an oversampled single carrier signal so with that the peak to average ratio of this scfdma signal will be uh, equal to the single carrier signal okay already i discussed that what is the par of single carrier signal right it will be equal to 1 or i can say it is 0 db but in case of uh, 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 multi carrier signal the ofdma will be is in the range of what it is uh, around 10 db right i think i said it is n okay the par will be is equal to n means it is directly proportional to the number of carriers we use in the system right with respect to that i discussed it already okay how it is how the peak average ratio in case of ofdm is proportional to number of sub carriers how it is only one in case of single carrier so with that what i said already so the reduction of this par makes the power amplifier cost will be less and hence it is preferred for uplink due to this cost and power constraint experienced by the mobile handset uh, this is all the advantage of uh, SCFDMA, what I can say. The main disadvantage of uh, SCFDMA is it experiences more spectral leakage than OFDMA. Okay, so that is the drawback of uh, SCFDMA, what I can say. It experiences what? More spectral leakage. Okay. So, and achieve uh, frequency diversity differently that leading to slight differences in the performance means what i wanted to say is the performance of scfdma is slightly lower than the ofdma i can say okay so scfdma has a complexity okay because we do fft and as well as iffft operation in both the transmitter and as well as receiver so with that the complexity of this scfdma is more compared to ofdma so that is a Another drawback of the SCFDMA. Okay. Yes, hope this point is clear. Yes, my dear, my dear students. I think. Uh, yes, is it possible to say, Abilash, what are the advantages of SCFDMA? Abilash? Yes, Abhilash. Okay. What about uh, Aditya? See, many people started leaving because they understood that I will be asking questions. Hmm? Yes, Aditya. So, the PAR of uh, SCFDMA is lower than OFDMA. Very good. At least you have cast the right point. Okay, so the peak to average ratio of SCFDMA is uh, significantly lower than the OFDM. Right, or I can say OFDMA, right? Yeah, that is the uh, greatest advantage of SCFDMA, what I can say. Okay, so with respect to that point only, you can say how when uh, the peak to average ratio is uh, small or lower than the OFDMA, 
So the requirement of I cos power amplifier is not required, right? So with that, the that is why it is preferred for uplink that is which is used in the mobile handset, right? Yes, anything else? Yes, anybody other other than Aditya, at least he has opened up his mouth and he said rightly the right point he has catched. Yes, let me ask at least the one advantage I could hear. Similarly, what is the disadvantage of SCFD MEA? Yes, anybody else? So before I call your names, I think people should voluntarily come forward and say, yes, this is what the drawback of uh, SCFD MEA. Yes, be fast. Hello. There are more spectral leakages. Yes. Okay, so what uh, Navya says, uh, there will be uh, more spectral leakage. So that is uh, one drawback of SCFDMA. Fine. Okay, she has also captured the right point, what I can say. So SCFDMA, I said it experiences more spectral leakage when compared to OFDMA. So with that, uh, what I want to say is uh, the frequency diversity achieved by this SCFDMA is slightly different. That leads to uh, slight differences in the performance of SCFDMA when compared to OFDMA. Fine. So that is one point. What is the another point? One more uh, disadvantage I said. Anybody other than these people, whoever is responded now? Yes, I expect other people to open up their mouth and say the answer. Still, I have a slide. Yes, come on quickly. Let me go to the next slide. One more drawback of SCFDMA. It has complexity disadvantages compared to OFDMA. Sir. Very good. Right. So the complexity of SCFDMA is more when compared to OFDMA. Because of what we say the complexity of SCFDMA is more, and compared to OFDMA? FFT blocks. Yeah, because we perform FFT and as well as IFFT, both in transmitter and receiver, right? So when compared to OFDMA, we perform only IFFT operation at the transmitter and FFT operation at the receiver side. But here, what we do, we, bo we do both FFT and as well as IFFT. So with that, the complexity is increased. Very good. Okay, then I think let me take the next points. So this is a point. Okay, so then let me have how OFDMA and SAFDMA is used in LTE, right? So already uh, discussed about this. I said OFDMA is uh, used in LTE for downlink transmission, okay? And SCFDMA is used in LTE for uplink transmission. So I hope that point is clear. Yes, my dear students. OFDMA is preferred for what? And uh, SCFDMA is used where? Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah. So I want to repeat once again. Though I have not written in slide, let me say OFDMA is used in LTE for downlink transmission, okay? SCFDMA is used in LTE for uplink transmission, okay? So keeping that in mind, so uh, let, uh, let me discuss about the uh, frequency, time frequency grid of LTE, okay? Is that fine? Uh, though I have discussed this, uh, let me say once again about this uh, time frequency grid. Yes, it is very, very important. And even I'm going to discuss uh, still in more depth when I was discussing about the uh, frame structure, frame structure of LTE. Okay, as of now, I think you should be able to understand few things. Okay, though I said in the previous class about these, uh, is it possible to say what is written 
at least yes some of the students should communicate with me so i want the, others all, others sir, to communicate no. yeah so those green blocks yes, not, yeah yeah what is that green box so those are not clear sorry not clear huh? no which yeah. one second figure or first figure the right hand side of the figure sir those okay you leave that you leave that diagram at least first one is clear no yes sir Uh, in this, try to understand what is written in x-axis and what is written in y-axis. And I hope this is visible wherever I am moving the cursor. I don't know whether my cursor is visible or not. No, no. Yeah, cursor is not visible, right? So I think no. I don't know what they made. So at least now I am working with pen. Is it visible, my writer? Yes, I marked with pen. I put a tick mark. Is it visible? Tick mark. Mm, no, sir. Huh? Tick mark is also not visible. No, sir. Okay. Okay. Then fine. Uh, okay. At least these blocks are visible, no? Yes, sir. That's visible. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. With respect to that, just take time. you concentrate on this diagram i wanted to say about this though i have told already what is this now i would like to hear from your end from students end yes shall i i think even if i make the slide show for you people it is visible as not slide show no yes sir, it's not in slide show sir oh yeah i don't know what is the problem in this google updated version of google meet do i make it uh, slide show we are able to see fine with respect to this i think it is visible no now even if it is not a slide show yes sir. i think now now my cursor means uh, whatever i am moving it is visible no, right in yes sir. yeah yeah possible to just read what is written at least other students Yes, those who have not opened up their mouth, I think I wanted to hear their voice. Yes, come on, students, open up your mouth and say at least. I am asking you to read from the slide what is written. Is it so difficult to say what is this one? First, at least let us go from outside. Okay, what x-axis is mentioned? Hey, what is this, sir? What is written? You can't read that and say what is this one? Hello. Hey, don't be like this, sir. Frequency, oh. sir. Yeah. See, after showing and asking what is written in x-axis, even for saying that, thirty people are there out of thirty. What is this? the same set of students are communicating? What happened to others? Huh? I don't like this type of uh, attitude. Uh, not communicating with a teacher. Then don't be like this. See, when I, if I am asking something else which is not known, which is not there in the slide, if you are not answering, I can understand. I am displaying something and I am asking. to get the response even for that you people don't respond hmm? yeah so here how many frequencies is written how many frequencies is written 12 so 12 frequencies yeah 12 right it is written 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and 12 so these are the sub carriers what i can say okay so there are 12 sub carriers okay and uh, here this axis what is written time, time right yeah means frequency versus time this graph okay so how many i said already discussed earlier so what is this on 14 is written right 1 to 14 so it is a ofdm symbol what i can say okay 
1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 14 OFDM symbols is written here okay and there are 12 sub carriers in that i said seven OFDM symbols okay seven OFDM symbols with uh, this is 12 sub carriers is known as one resource block hope you are able to understand what is resource block means seven OFDM symbols with the 12 sub carriers okay that is known as the one resource block okay so here one cell I've shown that is what resource element I say one cell is known as the resource element so hope you understood what is resource block and how this resource element is different from resource block okay then I said in case of uh, OFDM here. Yeah? What is the sub carrier frequency? Is it possible to say any one of you? What is the value of the sub carrier frequency? Yes, sub carrier frequency. How many times, how many classes I need to repeat this? Huh? After taking 20 plus hours of class, this I might have repeated at least 10 times while explaining. Uh, at different places and even it is written in the slide still you are unable to say what is the sub carrier spacing in case of OFDMA or in case of LTE yes at least looking at this value you can't say what is the value you are going to get from year to year I said there are 12 sub carriers right is written 180 kilohertz so you will not be able to find out what is the value of each sub carrier spacing you can't divide 180 by 12 15 kilohertz. 15 kilohertz right right so please try to understand these are all very basic things even if you are not able to understand these basic things if you are not able to respond for this then what you are going to take away okay so in case of LTE is a time frequency grade. I said the sub carrier spacing is of 15 kilohertz. So, like that, there are 12 sub carriers. Okay. So, 12 into 15 kilohertz. Okay. I said 15 kilohertz is the sub carrier spacing. Like that, I am using 12 sub carriers. So, the 12 sub carriers into 15 kilohertz will give you 180 kilohertz. Okay. So, this seven OFDM symbols with the 12 sub carriers is known as one resource block. Okay. I said one cell within this is known as one resource element. So is it possible to say how many resource elements will be there in one resource block? Yes, I said seven OFDM symbols with the 12 sub carriers, right? Is known as one resource block is it possible to say i am asking how many resource elements will be there in one resource block 56 how much 84 yeah 84 sir. 84 sir. 84 see 12 sub carriers and seven ofdm symbols so 12 into 7 okay 12 into 7 how much it is 84 right so 84 resource elements will be there in one resource block okay so in case of LTE that is for downlink transmission so one resource block will be assigned to one user one user equipment what I can say okay so in one cell maybe we may be having hundreds of user equipments right so one resource block will be assigned to one user okay fine so with respect to seven OFDM symbols 12 sub carriers I said that is known as one resource block right in that one small cell it is there that one OFDM with one sub carrier one OFDM symbol with one sub carrier I said that the small cell is known as the resource element okay I hope uh, if you are able to understand that much I think I can take you to the next level and uh, see this 14 OFDM symbols now 
uh, in that i said there are two slots slot 0 and slot 1 and uh, together is known as the sub frame i said i used those terms slot and sub frame so one sub frame will be having two slots okay and uh, one slot duration is 0.5 milliseconds okay so this is one slot i say it is 0.5 milliseconds so this is another slot another 0.5 milliseconds so together is one sub frame that duration is 1 millisecond okay so i will come back to this diagram it is not an issue so just let me show another diagram oh, i think yes hope you able to see this okay yes here is shown no? 12 sub carriers with 180 kilohertz right with seven ofdm symbols which is shown in uh, blue color right so that is known as one resource block okay and here clearly written the sub carrier frequency spacing is 15 kilohertz so hope you able to understand this so slot 0 okay slot 0 means this much right one slot so like that so uh, depending upon the bandwidth we will be able to have different number of resource blocks right right one resource block means it will be having 12 sub carriers okay and this slot 0 will have seven ofdm symbols okay with that i said 84 resource elements will be there okay fine similarly i said uh, two slots will be equal to one sub frame and uh, i said uh, one slot duration is 0.5 milliseconds so two slots will be equal to one sub frame so which is equal to 1 millisecond so like that to say one frame in case of lte there will be 10 sub frames okay the duration of one sub frame is 1 millisecond so i said the one frame will have 10 sub frames so duration of one frame is 10 milliseconds i said okay and i said one sub frame will have two time slots right so in that sense i can say uh this uh, one lte frame has tens uh, tens of frames right with that i say 20 slots will be there okay 20 time slots is that fine okay so with that understanding of uh, lte time and frequency so let me i think uh, just say okay i think i will take up this uh, in the afternoon class okay how do we do the allocation notification and what type of feedback is used and how the uh, mobile session will come to know that what sub carrier or what resource block to be used okay so let me discuss this in the afternoon class